It's one thing to draw up an idea for an incredible looking building, but it's a much harder task to make it a reality. And yet modern architects and builders are pushing the limits of what buildings can be. For example, did you know that there's an apartment complex in Miami with a literal curved exoskeleton made from thousands of pieces of glass fiber? And that you can buy a house off the coast of Dubai that's half underwater, half above it? These are just a couple of the buildings that were nearly impossible to build. Seahorses are known for being able to glide rather effortlessly above and below the surface of the ocean. But not surprisingly, the floating seahorse villas in Dubai don't actually match their animal counterpart in that aspect, but they do sit in the water partially submerged and fully floating. So that's at least fairly close to the swimming skills of real seahorses. The World Islands are a set of land masses off the coast of the United Arab Emirates shores, and a bird's eye view of them looks like a miniature representation of the world's major land masses. And sitting in the heart of Europe section are the floating seahorse villas. Developed by Nakheel Properties, the villas each consist of three levels. One is at sea level, one is a deck located above sea level, and one is, you guessed it, underwater. But while they float on the ocean, they're not actually boats. They're made of marine-grade concrete and were hauled out to sea with giant cranes before being anchored to the floor of the ocean. The upper sections are constructed of light aluminum and give off a distinctly yacht-like appearance. Downstairs, you've got the main bedroom and a bathroom. The bedroom has a rounded glass window that goes from floor to ceiling, allowing residents an incredible view of the ocean around them. And in the bathroom, there's a similar window next to the tub. Up above the water, they each have living and dining areas with open plans and giant windows allowing for incredible views of the coastline. And on the deck, there are more amenities like a minibar, kitchenette, and an incredible view of the Dubai skyline. The floors are connected by glass and bent wood staircases. The first phase of the seahorse plan included 78 villas in 2020, and there will eventually be 131 of them. You can snag one of these 4,000 square foot homes for around 3 million bucks. But if below and at sea level doesn't feel like your bag, perhaps you'll be intrigued by this next skinny marvel. The Steinway Tower was completed in Manhattan in 2022, and you might be wondering what was so tricky about building a skyscraper in a city full of them. Well, you'll change your mind when you find out it's the thinnest skyscraper in the world. It was built by a New York City firm called Studio Sofield, and it stands at 1,428 feet, looking down over Central Park. And in case you're wondering, it's called Steinway because it was built on the land that was once home to the most famous piano makers in the world, Steinway & Sons. Upon completion, it set the record for thinnest skyscraper on account of its 1 to 24 ratio of width to height. Now, no matter how skinny a tall building is, it needs at least some structural elements that literally hold it up in place. But architects are starting to think outside the box, literally, on what those can be. The 1000 Museum is in Miami, and its main function is as a high-rise residential building filled with condos. But its far cooler function is being an example of an architectural exoskeleton. Yep, you heard that right. When we think of exoskeletons, we usually imagine certain species like bugs that have their skeletons on the outside. Or maybe we imagine those futuristic military uniforms with exoskeletons to enhance strength and movement. But we don't usually associate them with buildings. Well, architect Zaha Hadid did and designed 1000 Museum to have giant exoskeletons attached to the outside. It's a 62-story building that rises 707 feet. That means it's not only one of the tallest buildings in the city, but also potentially the most interesting looking one. And those exoskeletons are the reason it's usually referred to by its nickname, Scorpion Tower. But most people who look at the tower probably just assume the exoskeleton was an artistic choice and simply gives it a distinct look. But that's only the half of it. The exoskeleton takes on a lot of the structural weight of the building, too. And because of that, fewer columns are needed inside it. So there's more internal space available than in most other tall buildings. To make Hadid's dream of a smooth and strong exoskeleton, the builders had to drill down a record-breaking depth of 170 feet to install the auger cast piles used to connect to the exoskeleton. Then they crafted the pieces of the exoskeleton out of GFRC, aka glass fiber reinforced concrete. It's a special blend of glass fiber mixed with ceramic and concrete that takes on properties of being easier to mold into various shapes while retaining incredible amounts of strength. 
They used 5,000 pieces of it to craft the exoskeleton on the Scorpion Tower, and it was well worth the effort. Well worth the effort, you should subscribe to our channel. Now, while exoskeletons are indeed impressive, when it comes to architecture, there's nothing quite like pure height, and the Burj Khalifa in Dubai is exactly that. Standing at 2,717 feet high, it's the tallest building in the world. And of course, that means it certainly came with its share of challenges. For starters, it had to be able to deal with the intense 150 mile per hour wind at the top of the tower. Before they started building, they used CAD, Computer Assisted Design Programs, to test out 40 different types of wind tunnel. They also used CAD to analyze the effects of pressure from the high altitude on the various parts of the building. And they also had decided not to use mass dampeners, which is usually how super tall buildings resist the wind. Instead, they reduced the width of the tower at the higher altitudes and softened the outer buttress edges. These steps, along with literally rotating the building's planned direction 120 degrees to account for the way the wind blows, all aided in keeping the Burj from being blown over. There were also building challenges like pumping concrete to the top levels while still keeping it in liquid form. This is a particularly tough task in the heat of the desert, so they not only used a specialized mix of concrete that would stay liquid at higher temps and for longer periods of time, but they also only pumped it up the building at night. Now, if I can only find someone to build the dream house I drew in third grade art class, I'd be really impressed. Did I mention that it's supposed to fly and turn invisible whenever I want? Hey, I was in third grade. Have any thoughts about these nearly impossible buildings? Pop them in the comments section.